going to be talking about my music tastes. It'll probably be the final video in my series of videos about me and my channel. Now, you'll find that some of these videos are dating back to the 70s. And that's when I grew up, along with the 80s. And to me, they're perfectly fine. I like videos that old. Uh, that doesn't mean that I t ignore newer type or artists and quite commonly younger artists. In fact, I'd like them just as much, but I don't ignore or throw out the older stuff. My tastes generally range from classic rock to pop and whatever contemporary names you have for it, like simply contemporary. You're going to find that every single track I have is Christian. I don't bother with non-Christian stuff. In fact, when a I get a Christmas album that has stuff like, say, Jingle Bells on it, I delete that. My belief is that Jesus is the reason for the season, not winter time. And so songs that simply celebrate winter, what good are they? No, what you need is a song that celebrates Jesus being born. Let's go to the manger. I don't care if it's July or December. Let's go to the manger year round. But anyway, I'm going to start listing some of these. And occasionally you'll find me mentioning specific albums and even maybe a track or two. But I'm probably going to skip a few of the artists simply because of the sheer number of different artists I've got. If you've been in my apartment, you'll know that I've got two CD racks full of music. And that's only about half of what I have, probably. The rest of it's all in digital-only form. So anyway, I'm going to start here. I like Second Chapter Vax. They're one of the groups that originated in the 70s and continued into the 80s. I have a few For Him songs. Aaron Jeffrey is... One that I like and was kind of wishing that they would have stayed together long, but I'm assuming that Aaron Benward, the son in that group, uh, decided he needed to pursue his own career. Strangely enough, I haven't really heard of him since. I have Aaron Schust, Addison Road. I certainly have some Amy Grant songs. Andrew Peterson is one that I like, and in my previous video, you probably heard me quoting one of his songs, where he talks about a sign reading, God hates fags, and that he's not necessarily saying that God hates fags, he's just quoting the sign. I remember a lot of audio and adrenaline. I have quite a few Avalon songs. Barry McGuire's Cosmic Cowboy is one of my favorite songs. Uh, Big Daddy Weave, Big Tent Revival. In fact, I have their debut there. I have a Billy Sprague song. I like Bob Bennett. He's another one going back to at least the 80s. I have a Bob Carlyle's album. Britt Nicole's good. She's one of the younger artists. Bruce Carroll is kind of getting more off to Christian country, but I kind of like his music. Some of the things like Boomerang are really what I like. 
Brian Duncan has some really good music, uh, particularly one of his Christmas uh, songs is The Form of Man, where he talks about he can't understand why God wrapped his love in flesh and blood and took the form of man. I can't either, but... (laughs) Uh, Cateman's Call was a good group. I have some Carmen music, including Lazarus and uh, The Champion, Carolyn Aarons, Casting Crowns, Chris August, Chris Tomlin, Citizen Way, Dana Key, well, I have his solo album, and it's unfortunate that he died soon after releasing that album. Some David May stuff, Debbie Boone, and I mentioned Dana Key a moment ago. I have several DeGarmo and Key albums. Don Francisco, certainly East to West. FFH, you may or may not know this, that they were going to be known originally as Far From Home. That's where the initials come from. But then they found out that someone else was using that name. So they went to just the initials. I have a First Call album for King and Country, Francisca Battistelli, Jenny Owens, I like her. I don't know if you know this or not, but she is blind. I have some I and they. In fact, I went to an I and they concert a couple years ago. Some jars of clay. Jason Gray. In fact, I've got a song from him where he talks about. Uh, Christmas from the point of the innkeeper in Bethlehem. He just can't get any sleep. Uh, Jeremy Camp, Josh Wilson. Josh Wilson has a very good album. The, uh, The whole thing is patriotic. And one of his songs on that album is basically... Uh, our national anthem. He's out in some sort of concert and is introduced as Josh Wilson from Lincoln, Illinois. And does a pretty good job of singing it. It's not a horrible rendition. Kathy Tricoli, I've got one of her discs. I've got the full... Keith Green, The Ministry Years Collection. And as you'll see, I've got a couple of memorial albums for him. I have a Carrie Roberts CD. I have a couple Cutlass CDs. I have Laura Story. Some Lauren Daigle. Matt Mayer and Matt Redman, Matthew West, to Mercy Me, a Michael Cards ED, and a lot of Michael W. Smith. He's another one that goes back to at least the early 80s, and he wrote some of the early Amy Grant songs and toured with her as initially one of the uh, intro artist, I guess it would be. Maybe he did some backup vocals for her. I like Mariah Peters. She's the husband of one of the uh, boys in the Kings, or she's the wife of one of the boys in for King and Country. I have a lot of Newsboys stuff, but I kind of lost interest in the Newsboys when Pete Furler retired. They brought in the guy from DC Talk. There was 
nothing left really of the original band, certainly nothing of the Australian feel, the accents and everything. A lot of this, when I've heard them, they a lot of the music they did was rap from the DC Talk era. I have some new song. In fact, I really like the Christmas shoes. Some Nicole Nordmans, a couple Nicole C. Mullen tracks, Out of the Gray, and I've got pretty much every Petra album since their debut through, or every studio album through, or from the, when they debuted through when Bob Partman died, or excuse me, retired. Ugh. Uh, I really like their music. A lot of classic rock. In fact, they've got some of my favorite albums of all time. I did it. I get a lot of PFR stuff. Uh, I, for those that you may know, they initially released their first album as Pray From Rain, only to discover that there was another artist again using the same name who wanted that name to themselves. And so the, immediately after the first album came out, they started going by just PFR. I got some Philip Craig and Dean. And really like their song about the prison where they're in prison and in the cross there's a doorway with a hand that holds the key. I've got some plum, well, one plum CD for when they were actually a group. A lot of Point of Grace stuff, including the track where they talk about a bridge to cross the Great Divide and across to cro bridge the Great Divide. I've got some Ray Bolt stuff, and he's got some really good music. Unfortunately, I'm kind of upset at because he decided to, or that he was a homosexual after having been married for a long time, and then as a result, he's... His wife immediately demanded a divorce, of course. And his decision that he was homosexual effectively told his kids that they don't matter. They were a mistake. I got some Rebecca St. James. She's the sister of the two boys in for King and Country. I got a lot of Rich Mullen stuff, including a copy of the Jesus record, which now has Richmond Vickers' signature on it. He wrote My Deliverer and was in the same Jeep that killed Rich Mullins and was badly hurt in that crash. For those that don't know the accident, that happened not too far from Peoria on I-39, and Mitch was flown to St. Francis. At least I assume it was St. Francis. He was flown somewhere in Peoria, and as a result, in the Morton High School, he, he held a thank you concert where he recorded one of his albums. And I got a DVD on that. And that's when he signed my copy of My Deliverer. And I talked about it, thank you, because he on the front row he had a lot of the first responders and nurses and stuff who helped him out. Uh, I've got some Rekua, like a Midnight, what is it? Midnight Sun. Just couldn't remember the name offhand. A group you might not have heard of that I like is Serene and Pearl. You should look them up. 
they're a pair of sisters that have some really good music, at least on the album I have. I don't know if they did more or not. I never looked them up. But one example is they're going into deep water with their dad, and their dad is keeping, making sure they won't drown. But then they relate that to Jesus taking them into deep water. And as long as they're with him, they're fine. Another group you might not have heard of is one where a weird circumstance, the the group has a self-titled album with a title track. So the group name is Sierra. The debut album is called Sierra, and the title track is called Sierra. Anyway, the name came from that there's no higher place than where Jesus takes us to. You should look them up. I've got some Steve Camp music. I really like some of his music, like Taking Heaven by Storm. Some Steve Taylor songs, I really like this disco. A lot of Steve and Curtis Chapman's music. Probably not as much as my Petra music. That's, what, 10 albums? Plus, that's just the studio albums. Some 10th Avenue North, the Afters. I've been straying. Going back to what my parents listened to, I've actually got a Bill Gaither trio album. So I was somewhat influenced by them. I got some Third Day music. Uh, Two Stage Child is a pair of women. Who, one of the women went on. No, excuse me. Don't confuse that with all the other stuff. The one where I was thinking one of the women went on to something else. That's Karen Lay. I've got them too. At least their debut CD. And Lay Compello ended up joining Point of Grace. Now, earlier I talked about uh, Keith Green and how I had some artists in memory of Keith Green. One of them is No Compromise. And remembering the music of Keith Green, the other is Your Love Broke Through. I certainly recommend the first one. I've got some Ayn Watson music. I've got some Wes King music. Whiteheart and Jack Williams. I do have Songs from the Loft, which was basically uh, back when Amy Grant and Gary Chapman were still married. They got a bunch of other people together in their barn loft which apparently had a studio and they recorded an album in there with each artist taking on a different song anyway that's the complete list I felt like discussing as usual if you like this video please click the like button down below Please subscribe and click the notification bell. Thank you. Bye.